بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات الوهم وأكرمني بنور الفهم اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا خزائن علومك برحمتك يا رحم الرحمن الحمد لله we have توفيق to continue our study of Islamic theory of education and we were talking about what we should try to achieve what should be our aims we talked about certain things that we need to aim at as beliefs, as a matter of ma'rifa about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and some important aspects of our ma'rifa of Allah were highlighted. Then ma'rifa of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and imams and in particular imam of our time and we try to explain that ma'rif of imam of our time is not just knowing uh, some historical information about him you know when he was born when he went to occultation his father his mother his ancestors and what he's going to do in akhir zaman we should have a more uh, dynamic uh, Ma'rifa of Imam in the sense that can affect our performance and the way that can give us direction. Something that if you know or don't know makes big difference. Now today we want to talk on uh, certain uh, things that as sentiments or as emotional uh, and as inclinations that we have to develop in ourselves and students so that we can come up with some attitudes that uh, theoretical ma'rifa should lead to these things. The first thing that I want to stress on is al hub lillah and fillah love for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and love for the sake of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first we talk about love for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there is a beautiful hadith that i take it to be as a very key and very strategic hadith and I think it can help us in defining what should be our approach what should be our strategy in tabligh in teaching in all our activities and this hadith has been mentioned in different sources different books for example uh, we have this hadith that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said Awhalla ila najiyyihi Musa ibn Imran alayhi salam Najiy is different from Najib Najib means selected, someone who is selected Najiy means someone that Allah has had Najwa with him Allah talked to Musa So Najiy like Kalim means Allah has spoken to him so Allah communicated to Musa alayhi salam Ya Musa ahbibni wa habibni ila khalqi Maybe I can put it in the chat so that you can also see the 
الحديث سو so, او موسى make my people first of course ahbabni which is clear means love me but also habibni ila khalqi make my people also love me endear me to them so it's not enough that we love allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of course it is great but we should also make sure that other people also as much as possible are helped in developing great and strong love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Musa alayhi salam said, Ya Rabbi inni uhibbuka. My Lord, I love you. Fakayfa uhabbibuka ila khalqik. But how can I make your people love you? قال اذكر لهم نعمائي عليهم وبلائي عندهم فانهم لا يذكرون مني الا كل خير اور فانهم لا يعرفون مني انهم لا يعرفون مني الا كل خير there are two versions إنهم لا يذكرون or إذ لا يعرفون Basically Allah said to Musa عليه السلام The key for developing love is to remind them of my blessings and how I have given them in different tests, in different trials my support for them because people when they remember someone who has given them blessings and um, supported them, they would love. And since they only can remember good coming from me to them, they would love me. There is another version which I have also put here for you, which is uh, more detailed and has some continuity and maybe it's even clearer. Uh, and it is uh, uh, cited from Imam Zain al-Abidin alayhi salam. Maybe the previous one also had this ending, but the narrator didn't mention or, you know, those who put this hadith together because sometimes they extracted part of the hadith. The late Ayatollah Burujirdi, Ayatollah al-Ulma Burujirdi, Rahmatullah alayhi, one of the great projects that he managed to initiate and most of it was done during his life was the book Jami'u Ahadith al-Shia because he was very much aware that our hadith are when they were classified sometimes they are cut for example part of it was about Salat part of it was about Hajj I'm simplifying the issue so they are put in different sections but when we have all the hadith together, there are sometimes some evidence in the previous part or the next part that can shed light on this part. Therefore, he tried to bring these together. We can mention it in different places, but it's good to have as much as possible in the same place so that we can understand uh, the whole hadith in the light of any evidence which was there. So, in this second version, we have more details. Allah revealed to Musa alayhi salam, Habibni ila khalqi wa habib al khalqa ilay. It's perhaps the same hadith, maybe there are two different occasions, I don't know, but it seems to be maybe the same thing, but with more details. Here the question is, make my people love me and make them lovable to me of course Allah loves everyone but to be 
Mahbub of Allah, Habib of Allah, to be reach the point that Allah loves them without reservation, then they need to qualify. So Allah is asking Musa that you should help. You know, I believe that prophets, scholars, teachers, parents should somehow be like brokers. They would like to connect people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is buying from people their life, their money, their skills. Of course, he has given them, but in Allah hashtara, he's buying from them. Now, we should be brokers. We should convince people to sell to Allah, not to anyone else. So, Allah says to Musa, you know, be a good broker. Habibni ila khalqi wa habib al khalqa ilayya. Qala ya rabbi kayfa af'al? My Lord, how I should do this? And I love that Musa alayhi salam keeps asking. <laughs> you know, when you have opportunity of asking Allah or Rasulullah or a scholar, it's good to ask so that you get wisdom. قَالَتْ ذَكِّرْهُمْ آلَائِي وَنَعْمَائِي لِيُحِبُّونِي Remind them of my blessings, my bounty, so that they love me. Then Allah said, فَلَئِن تَرُدَّ آبِقًا عَنْ بَابِي if you manage to bring back one person who has run away from my door, from my gate, someone that has stopped believing and practicing, now you manage to put again love for Allah in his heart. Abiq means has escaped. O Zalan and Fenai, or someone who is lost, is misguided in the sense that he didn't want to run away, but he didn't find the way back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he's misguided. If you manage to bring one of such people to me, it's better for you than about of hundred years but what type of hundred years not like our you know years hundred years that you fast every day and you do tahajjud every night every night and maybe the whole night if you do tahajjud and if you fast every day for hundred years it's not equal to bringing one person back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And of course, in putting love in their heart, they become lovable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because they can only do good. If they have love for Allah, they would not do mischief. So my understanding is this, that any religious activity in addition to increasing their ma'rifah it should lead to their love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more love for Allah more passion for going towards Allah more yearning for going towards Allah. This is the test. If what we do does not add to love of people or students or children to Allah, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are not successful. And if na'uzu billah, na'uzu billah, if what we do makes them run away, then you can imagine how much harm we have done to them and to ourselves. 
if we make them instead of loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala na'uzu billah na'uzu billah dislike or confused or lose faith lose hope lose trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so this is very important for us this is very important target practices also are important and inshallah if I get chance I mention otherwise I will inshallah refer you to the discussion previous series about what we should do with practices but this is the key if they have love for Allah then they would pray they would fast they would observe hijab they would give zakat but if they don't have love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala maybe sometimes they do it out of fear or out of you know shyness etc but after some time they may stop so we must work on performance on their practices but make sure that we don't just ask them to do things we also make them love Allah and appreciate these things and do it as sign of gratitude he has done so much for me what can I do to make him happy of course I know even doing these things are for myself but at least I know that I'm doing what he wants from me like someone who has great teacher who has helped him with everything and now the teacher says you know please uh, study okay I cannot do anything for the teacher but at least I say okay let me do what the teacher is asking me to study so I show my gratitude so this is very important issue love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Amir al-Mumin alayhi salam said إِذَا أَكْرَمَ اللَّهُ عَبْدًا شَغَلَّهُ بِمَحَبَّتِهِ If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to honor his servant he would make him busy with his love so it means that the heart of this person would be preoccupied with love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala إِذَا أَكْرَمَ اللَّهُ عَبْدًا شَغَلَّهُ بِمَحَبَّتِ Allah doesn't need us to love him first of all he doesn't need anyone to love him first he is ghani he has no need secondly there are so many people who are loving him and dying for him and yearning for him and crying for him that even even if there was any need he has already have you know many many malaikatun muqarrabun and also awliya and biya mursaleen so our love for him is not doing anything for him or in the creation but it can do something good for us and for our family for our community for humanity anything that can help us on this planet so it's a great honor if Allah chooses you to be his lover Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is quoted as making this dua Allahumma ja'al hubbaka ahabba al-ashya illahi O Allah make love for you the most beloved thing to me the most precious experience in my life should be love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and when this love comes then everything becomes easy you know if you love really someone for example if you love some guest buying cooking cleaning home waiting for that guest and then opening the door welcoming and spending time with this all becomes joyful but if you don't like someone you think it's burden I have to do this although I don't like it but you know just to avoid further 
difficulties, I have to welcome this guest. But your heart is not there. Physically, you force yourself to be there, but your heart is not there and you can't when it is going to finish. But if you love, it's a different experience. Sometimes I make this example, you know, I say, for example, if sisters, you know, uh, or of course brothers also who help, uh, you know, for example, they want to clean the house. If they love the guest, they really make the house clean. If they don't, they just try to do the minimal and, you know, put uh, uh, things on the rugs or, you know, in the cupboard or, you know, something, for example, that they or the guest is not going to that room, so we leave it. But if you love a guest, you have energy. Uh, even you go and clean outside home, the passage, you know, the pathway. So love makes things very much different. When you want to cook for someone that you love or you don't love, it's a big difference. When I want to give lecture to people I love or I don't love them, I may function different. Even if I want to force myself, it would not be as natural and as you know as smooth as when I love them. So we need to develop love for Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala and for people, as I will mention inshallah later. In Munajatul Muhibbin, Imam Zainul Abidin alayhi salam says, As'aluka hubbaka wa hubba man yuhibbuka wa hubba kulla amalin yusiluni ila qurbik. It's very comprehensive. I ask you for your love. So please enable me to love you. And love for those who love you. So I want them to be my friends, my beloved ones among people. And love for any action that can bring me near you. Such person then is guaranteed that he would succeed. If you love Allah and love friends of Allah and love actions that take you towards Allah, then you wouldn't do anything wrong. And also, and taj'alaka ahabba ilayya mimma sabaq. I want you, which is the same request in a different wording, to make yourself more lovable to me than anything else. Wa an taj'ala hubbi iyyak qa'idan ila ridhwanik. Please make my love for you my leader towards your pleasure. If I love someone, then I love to please him. And my yearning for you, please make it an obstacle for disobedience. You never disobey and displease someone that you love. You are all the time worried not to do anything that make your beloved unhappy so that they may decide to leave you. Number two, after love for Allah, I want to emphasize on hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Me, you, our teachers uh, of the community, all need to invest on developing in our community hope hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without hope we cannot make any success any progress any improvement shaitan would very much want to make us despair yes is one of the worst things that can happen and if someone has hope, means is still alive, is still active, is still resisting against problems. If you take hope, the person is finished. If you take hope from community, that community is finished. And Alhamdulillah, in the school of Ahlul Bayt salam, we have extra reason for hope. 
you know sometimes I use this example you know we say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ghani yeah he is rich absolutely rich he has khaza in us samawati he has all the treasures of the skies and the earth so a moment should feel that I'm not poor if I listen to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he can anytime give me everything that I need so this is what every Muslim can feel but imagine if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes also a treasure of gold and coin in a place in for example our city right our country and you are able to go and see by your eyes so much gold and you know silver and you know notes are there I think many people then would feel more confident <laughs> because unfortunately unless we see things uh, many times our knowledge is not enough to give us certainty so for a moment it shouldn't make difference because I trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I trust his words and also I am rationally aware that he has created everything and everything belongs to him and is at his service but unfortunately many times if we see that Allah has money and gold we would believe better this is why you know some people want to worship a statue or idol you know, as Bani Israel said to Musa alayhi salam اجعل لنا إلها كما لهم آله as soon as they crossed the sea and they saw some people are worshipping idols, they said, you know, they have many idols. Give us one idol. They wanted to see the Lord. It's the problem. So, if Allah has deposited his money somewhere that we can physically see we would feel very confident even people who have no yaqeen they would feel very confident oh look this is all for my lord now when it comes to hope he has actually done so especially for us followers of Ahlul Bayt because not only we have all the religious and intellectual reasons to have hope in Allah not only we know that for him everything is possible and everything is easy please remember everything for him is easy not just possible everything is hayyan it's easy for him not only we do we know that but he has provided us with a source of hope and that is Imam Mahdi Allah Ta'ala Farajahu Sharif so it's not just a promise he has already created what he has promised and he is living and is in a standby so why then we should be despaired if he had said, you know, I'm going to create a savior, then still maybe some people have difficulty. Although Mu'man should not have any worries because we trust his promise. But it's actually there. It's prepared. So, we should never be hopeless. Knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, knowing his power, knowing his closeness, knowing his concern for mu'mineen, concern in the intellectual sense, not emotional sense, and knowing that he has already created our savior, then should be very hopeful, very, very hopeful. The more iman we have, the more hope we have. The greater iman, the greater hope. So, we should really invest on hope. In Dua Abu Hamza Somali, 
İmam Zeynul Abedin says to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Ya Rabbi inna lana fi karraja an azima My Lord we have great hope in you This is very much highlighted in our du'as We have hope in you Allah says in the Quran in this famous ayah, ayah 53 of chapter 39 قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَتُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ Allah says to Musa, حَبَّبْ نِيَ لَا خَلْقِ Allah says to Prophet, tell my servants who have committed excesses against themselves that they should not be despaired from mercy of God. Inna Allah yaghfiru dhunuba jami'a Allah truly forgives all the sins and not some of the sins and He forgives all the sins. Inna huwa al rahim He is very forgiving and He is very merciful. So hope must be always strong even if na'uzubillah our hadith says someone has killed many prophets uh, still they should not feel despair if they feel despair that's worse than their sins and crimes Quran also says in verse 87 of chapter 12 la tayasu min rawhillah do not despair of Allah's mercy so we should never think and we should never tell people or students or children that you are finished or if you do this you are finished you are no longer a believer you have no relation with Allah you are damned etc no at the same time that we should not falsely encourage them to do bad things and say you know nothing matters Allah is very forgiving but also we should not make them despair Amir al-Mu'min alayhi salam said in Nahj al-Balaghi al-Faqih kullu al-Faqih someone who has a really gr good grasp of religion and very deeply aware of religion would not make people feel safe from Allah's anger and would not make them despaired from Allah's mercy. You have to find a balance between fear and hope. Of course, maybe some people have become too much hopeless. You stress more on hope. Some people have become too much fearful. You have to help them to get rid of their fear. But some people have gone to the other side. They have become too much hopeful, unrealistically. Therefore, they take all the risk and, you know, they sin and disobey, etc. Here we need to stress more on fear. The third thing after love for Allah and hope in Allah is husnu dhanne billah. This is very important. It's very much connected to hope. We should have good opinion about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We should know that he would always... Go for the most honorable choice. Allah doesn't just do good things. He would always do the most honorable things, the most virtuous, the most you know valuable, the most beautiful things. There is no reason for him doing anything less than that. In our teachings, we have been warned against tatayur, thinking that bad things are going to happen, being pessimistic and say, I'm sure I'm going to have bad children, I'm sure I'm going to have bad marriage, I'm sure I'm not going to be forgiven, I'm sure this trip is going to you know, lead to misery, etc. No. This is tatayur, which is not good. But it's good to be 
optimistic. Tafa'alu bil khair. Should always be as much as possible hopeful. Especially when it comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We should be thinking that the best is going to happen to me. I would like to expand a little bit here. So if you go to Al-Kafi, and I put for you also the link here. Uh, you can also later find this hadith there. There is a chapter in the second volume of Al-Kafi, page 100, sorry, page 71, volume 2, page 71. One, there's a chapter about having good opinion about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you find several hadiths here about having good opinion about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala The first hadith is from Imam Baqir alayhi salam. Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi qala Allah tabarak wa ta'ala la yattakilul amilun ala a'malihim allati ya'malunaha lithawabi Those who act amilun they should not rely on the actions that they do for my reward. So they do things in order to get reward from me. They should not rely on those actions and say, okay, our salat, our fasting, etc. are enough for us. Why? فَإِنَّهُمْ لَبِجْتَهَدُوا وَأَتْعَبُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ أَعْمَارَهُمْ فِي عِبَادَةِ كَانُوا مُقَصِّرِينَ غَيْرَ بَالِغِينَ فِي عِبَادَتِهِمْ كُنْحَ عِبَادَتِي فِي مَا يَطْلُبُونَ عِنْدِي مِنْ كَرَامَتِي وَالنَّعِيمِ فِي جَنَّاتِي وَرَفِيعِ الدَّرَجَاتِ الْعُلَى فِي جِوَارِي Because even if they work very hard and all their life they tire themselves with my ibadah still they would be muqassir still with their ibadah they cannot reach those things that they are seeking what is those things that they are seeking min karamati to have honorable position with me to have blessing of being in my heavens my gardens and to have rafi darajat al ulafi jawari high ranks near me what can you do to qualify for that? What is the value of oral salat and fasting? You know, you know one of uh, scholars, you know, used to say that, you know, for example, how many years of prayer we have? Say, sixty years, seventy years after we become balik, for example. Okay. How many years of fasting? Say 60, 70 years. Okay. How much is the charge if you hire someone to do Salatul Qadha and Sawmul Qadha for 70 years? I know the figure now, but I don't want to mention figure because these figures change. But it's not that much. It's not even equal to one kidney let alone to eyes that we have you know all the things that we have so if we want to you know be calculating there's not that much that we can you know hope by these things that we are doing as actions they are important we shouldn't under you know estimate them in the sense that we say we don't bring them but we should know that they are not enough these are just a sign of respect that okay I'm praying I'm fasting I'm doing this thing as much as I can but I don't have really hope in these actions alone 
these actions are like you know taking a container to the Karim who is you know giving food away you know you, you take a container you have to take something <laughs> with our actions we are able to go to him and say you know please fill for us this so he says they cannot rely on they should not rely on their actions ولكن برحمتي فليثق. But they should have ثقة. They should have trust in my mercy. وفضلي فليرجو. They should have hope in my favor. وإلى حسن الظن بي فليطمئنو. And they should have confidence and tranquility with having good opinion about me فَإِنَّ رَحْمَتِي عِنْدَ ذَلِكَ تُدْرَكُهُمْ My mercy at that time would reach them and my rezvan will reach them and my forgiveness would cover them فَإِنِّي أَنَا اللَّهُ الرَّحْمَنُ الرَّحِيمُ وَبِذَالِكَ تَسَمَّيْتُ I am Allah who is Rahman and Rahim and I have chosen this as my name. This is my name. This is why every surah in the Quran starts with Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim apart from chapter 9 that has its own explanation. But even then, Allah doesn't want to introduce himself in other ways. In the discussion about Rahmah, if you are interested, we have explained this in you know, the series on understanding God's mercy. The next hadith is Imam Baqir salam again, Vajadna fi kitab aliyan alayhi salam. So in the writings of Imam Ali, Imam Baqir says, we have found this hadith. That Rasulullah on Minbar, he said, Walladhi la ilaha illahu. By the one who is no ilah, no one to be worshipped other than him. Ma u'tiya, please reflect on these strong words. On member Rasulullah after Qasam, he's saying this. Rasulullah doesn't need to make Qasam, but he wants us to, you know, have no least of doubt. Ma u'tiya mu'minun qattu khayr dunya wal akhirah illa bi husn zannihi billah wa raja'ihi lah wa husn khulqihi no moment, no believer has been given good of dunya and akhira except with having good opinion about Allah and hope in Him and having good temper and stopping, refraining from doing qayba, backbiting mu'mineen. Wallah, sorry, walladi, la ilaha illahu. لا يعذب الله مؤمنا بعد التوبة والاستغفار إلا بسوء ظنه بالله وتقصيره من رجائه وسوء خلقه واغتيابه للمؤمنين. Allah would not punish any believer after tawbah and asking for forgiveness unless if this moment has سوء ظن بالله bad opinion so Allah is not going to forgive me. Or has no hope, or has bad temper, and knows other people, and in particular, اغتيابه للمؤمنين, backbites مؤمنين. والله, والذي لا إله إلا هو لا يحسن ظن عبد مؤمن بالله. This in particular focus is on حسن الظن. وَالَّذِي لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا هُو By the one who, 
that there is no ma'bud except him, the opinion of a servant mu'min would not become good about Allah. إِلَّا اللَّهُ عِنْدَ ظَنَّ عَبْدِهِ الْمُؤْمِنِ And al unless Allah would be near what he thinks about him. So if you are thinking positively about Allah, Allah would also treat in the same way. Why? One reason is mentioned here. There might be other also explanations, but one explanation is this. Allah is very noble, very generous. Karim is more than generous. Therefore, it's a kind of nobility and generosity. You know, sometimes we say, you know, someone is very gentleman. Gentleman means someone who is Karim, has nobility and generosity, always acts with manners, with courtesy, with politeness. لَأَنَّ اللَّهَ كَرِيمٌ بِيَدِهِ الْخَيْرَاتِ Allah is Karim and He has all the khayrat, all the good things in His hand. So imagine a person who is very, very generous, very, very rich, no limits in His resources. Allah has haya. Allah, like you know, feeling embarrassed. Of course, you have to understand what does it mean because. Allah doesn't have emotions but if we want to explain this as a sifat of fail like you know for example we say Allah yaghzib Allah yarda it's, these are not emotional these are all sifat of fail in aqaid we have explained what they mean so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has haya it's like Allah acts as if he's embarrassed from his believing servant who has developed good opinion about him and then Allah would disappoint him. Develop good opinion about Allah and have yearning for him. You know, sometimes I use this example, you know, I say, actually people who are very generous, you know, they have a kind of thing that sometimes people may use as their weakness. Some people may take advantage, but they don't mind. You know, uh, there's a beautiful hadith says, al karimu qad yanfa'il or qad yataghafal, something like this. al karimu qad yataghafal. People who are very karim, very generous, very kind, sometimes they let people think that they can deceive them. They don't mind. Because they don't want to refuse and reject people you know sometimes you know that someone is lying telling lie to you but as much as possible you try to ignore it you don't say you know I know you are lying but it's okay uh, one of ulama rahmatullah alayh uh, it is said that he used to give a shahriya of maraja to Talab. You might have heard his name. Uh, I don't mention his name, but anyway, he is uh, one of our contemporary scholars, Rahmatullah Alai, from city of Yazd. So he used to give shahriya to Talab. Mashallah, he had great memory. So what he was doing, he was not writing down, I you know, right away 
because normally there are you know people who distribute and they have uh, you know notebooks and they register but he was mashallah so strong in memory that he was giving and then in the night or sometime you know he was writing down so one talabe went to him and said Aga, uh, Allah has given me a new baby could you you know give me some gift or etc and Aga gave him uh, some extra money some hadiya then after some time maybe after a month because they give monthly shahriya he again repeated said oh, uh, Allah has given me a new baby and he perhaps thought that Allah doesn't remember that last month he asked him. so he gave him the money and then just uh, whispered to him that you must be very grateful to your wife that every month brings a new baby for you. So <laughs> as a sense of humor. But he gave him the money. He didn't say, you know, you are lying or so. No, he, he took it in a good way. So this is the example of people who are Karim. Of course, Allah's example is much greater that Karim even sometimes let people think that they can take advantage of him as much as possible he doesn't bring to their attention that he knows so if someone goes to Karim and really has need then you can imagine that Karim would not disappoint someone who has honestly go gone to him with need when you say in dua, Oh Allah, I have come to your door. You don't know what this sentence is doing to a Karim. Imagine if you are Karim, inshallah you are all Karim and Karima. And you have a life of being Karim and you have always wanted the best for people and helped people, very generous, very you know kind and someone comes from another city for example and says you know I have an issue and I have come all the way to ask you for your help you don't want even people who are close to you to be disappointed what about someone who has heard about you and from another place has come to you you are not going to disappoint this person even if this person has a history for example says you know when I wanted to marry, you helped me. Now Allah is you know, giving me a child. For Karim, these his stories actually make the relation even better. Because he knows that at some point he has helped you. You have come now further. Now you are appreciating and he wants to continue. When I was in the primary school, you helped me. Now I want to go to secondary school. Karim says, okay, this person has made some progress. Now I give him money for secondary school. Then he says, you know, Alhamdulillah, I finished. You helped me with my primary and secondary. Now I want to go to university. Okay, Bismillah. So going to Karim and having a history with Karim is just making your case stronger. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that we have to have very positive opinion very good opinion about him because it's impossible that he would disappoint people who go with hope to him so in let me read one more hadith and we finish this session uh, imam raza alayhi salam also said Ahsan al-dhanna billah. This is hadith three. Ahsan al-dhanna billah. Have good opinion about Allah. For in Allah Azza wa Jal yaqul, "Ana inda dhanna abdi al-mu'min bi. In khayran fa khayra wa in sharran fa sharra." I am very much seeing what my mu'min servant thinks about me. 
If he thinks in a positive way, he would see it. If he thinks in a bad way, he would see it. What does it mean? It means that the way Allah responds is very much based on the way you invite him, the way you welcome him, the way you think about him. If you are hopeful, then he would help you. If you are hopeless and you think Allah is not kind enough or powerful enough to help you, so you are restricting yourself. There is a chance that still he may help, but you are narrowing down and limiting the possibilities and opportunities. So the key is in our hand. Remember me, I will remember you. You help me, I help you. You decide. You have good opinion. You say Allah is helping you, I help you. You say Allah is not going to help me, okay. So, your way of thinking is very important because Allah doesn't want to impose himself. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to happily invite him and welcome him to our life. I have an additional, additional point that although we have to discuss many things, but I feel I should say this uh, because this discussion has to be complete. Why our thinking is so important in addition to everything that we have said so far? I think there is something also very important here that it's not by chance that some people have husnu dhanna billah and some people have su'u dhanna billah. It's not by chance. The way you think about Allah is very much based on the way you are and you act. If you are yourself kareem, then you have positive opinion about Allah. If you are someone who is not disappointing people, you say it's impossible Allah disappoint me. But if you are a person who is happy with disappointing people and easily break the heart of people and reject them, then for you it's very difficult to think that Allah would not reject you. Unless you have ojb. <laughs> That's another bigger problem. But with all the problems that you know about yourself, if you have not been very kind and forgiving to people, you say, then why should Allah forgive me? Even without you thinking, there's a direct influence of the way you are and the way you behave and the way you think about God. People who are very uh, strict and rigid, they think God is strict and, and religion is like that. People who are very kind and merciful, they have a similar image of God or religion, etc. So this is also very important. Okay, let's have a little uh, break, inshallah, and then, inshallah, we can continue uh, after the break. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen.